Good afternoon. Uh, Don Colgan here, continuing on my segment of heavyweight contenders of the late 1960s into middle 1970s. And uh, last week we discussed the heavyweight contender Oscar Ringo Bonavena. And today I want to discuss the former WBA heavyweight champion Jimmy Ellis. Um, Ellis uh, started his career as a middleweight, and he did not have a lot of success in the beginning of his career. He at one point lost three out of four fights. And he became a Muhammad Ali's sparring partner during Ali's first reign as champion. Uh, Ellis' career began to change when Angel, Angel Dundee took Ellis on and became Ellis's manager. And um, Ellis became and grew into a legitimate heavyweight. He was a very good boxer, very strategic fighter, had a good right hand. And he entered the WBA elimination tournament to determine Ali's successor. And uh, he won a um, ninth round technical knockout over Leotis Martin. The same Leotis Martin that later knocked out Sonny Liston to effectively end his career. And they also won a 12-round decision over Oscar Bonavena, dropping Bonavena in round four and ten. Hard-fought fight, hard fight, but a clear-cut win for Ellis. And his opponent for the WBA heavyweight title was Jerry Quarry, who had um, won a somewhat controversial close decision over Floyd Patterson and scored a 12th-round technical knockout over probably the tournament favorite, Thad Spencer. So this set up the Quarry Ellis fight in 1968, and this fight was interesting because Quarry claimed afterwards that he injured his back in training and it went through with the fight. Now Quarry had his dad, Jack Quarry, in his corner, and Ellis had Angelo Dundee, and that made a big difference. Um, Dundee told Ellis to move to your right, jab, and drop in the right hand. Don't go to the ropes and never come to Quarry. And like an obedient student, that's exactly what Ellis did. And in a very tactical fight, there were a couple of occasions Quarry did hurt him. Ellis won a, a majority decision. Uh, I believe the referee scored it 7-7-1. But it was a, most observers gave the decision clear cut to Ellis, winning as many as nine or ten rounds. Now, uh, he defended the title once against Floyd Patterson in Sweden with a, winning a 15-round decision, which was, again, very controversial. Most of the... Um, Media and newspaper uh, journalists at ringside scored the fight for Floyd. He busted uh, Ellis's nose in the, uh, I think, in the second round. But uh, Harold Vallon scored it nine to six for Ellis, and the uh, same Harold Vallon who gave um, Chuck Wepner a ridiculous decision over Ernie Terrell in Atlantic City in 1973. So that was his one title defense. Then he met Joe Frazier, and Frazier had won recognition as the five state champion, including New York, uh, by virtue of a knockout over Big Buster Mathis. So this led to a clash, and uh, the winner would be recognized as uh, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. It was a much-anticipated fight. Ellis started off pretty well, generally outboxing Frazier for two and a half rounds, but Joe was coming and coming. He finally got the left hook in there in the middle of the third round, and it hurt, hurt Ellis badly. He never recovered from it. In the fourth round, he, Joe put him down twice. The last time in the final seconds of the round, and Ellis was out. He could not answer the bell for the fifth round, and Frazier won the uh, undisputed heavyweight championship with a fifth round technical knockout. After that, Ellis, uh, he remained a contender. He fought uh, Muhammad Ali in 1971, later in the year, and uh, lost on a 12th round TKO in a fight where Ali pretty much dominated Ellis. Uh, he hurt him in the fourth round. It was a Again, Ellis started well, but Ali hurt him with a big right hand in the fourth round. Ellis never really recovered from that. And uh, Ali gave him a pretty good going over. And uh, he he stayed, he fought Chivalo. He fought um, a number of lower-ranking heavyweight contenders. He did have a rematch with Frazier, who after Joe lost the title of Foreman, and Ellis was knocked out in nine rounds. But he kind of drifted into semi-oblivion. And it was really out of the heavyweight pitcher as a serious factor by the end of 1973. But he was a good fighter, a legitimate heavyweight contender. He had a short period of, of excellence, I'd say 1967 to 1971. But um, certainly one of the finest boxers, a beautiful boxer to watch. And uh, certainly one of the finer heavyweight contenders and a former WBA champion in the uh, that late 1960s to mid-1970s period. Thank you very much. We'll be back with another segment in a couple of days. And uh, the next one we're going to talk about is Big Buster Mathis. Thank you.